Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to work in our sketchbook and we are using watercolor and colored pencil in a Stillman and Burn mixed media beta sketchbook. And that is the sketchbook I usually have in my travel kit. I just really love the paper and it works well for the type of work that I like to do. I'm starting off by taping down the uh, paper. I'm actually just kind of taping off an area to work in and leaving a little area to test my supplies with. And if you want a real time version of this tutorial, you can find the live narrated tutorial in critique club I'll have a link down below in the video description also if I'm I have to apologize for the echo I'm recording the voiceover in the new edition and um, it's pretty open and echoey up here even though I'm covered up in towels and uh, and uh, shawls it's um, it's still pretty echoey so that's like the bane the bane of my existence is echoes these last couple of weeks uh, we're starting off with a call erase colored pencil which is an erasable colored pencil made by Prismacolor and I'm sketching in the berries in red and the leaves in green and I really like these pencils because I don't know what it is I think just drawing in a different color can sometimes spark your creativity and also um just kind of be freeing and give you a new perspective over just um, drawing in regular graphite and these are so erasable that it's nice and plus once you start painting the line disappears so um, it almost gives you that no, uh, no line look you can always go back in later and add a pen line if you want to but I just really like the way this works and the color race pencils are not as waxy as traditional colored pencils so they don't resist the watercolor you can go right over them which is really nice now I wouldn't want to do a piece of artwork in these color race pencils because they're just not that pigmented but for doing my first sketch they're really wonderful so I'm using um, kind of like a turquoise blue uh, for the background and I'm adding in some greens for the hulls and the paints that I'm using are the Paul Rubens paints they are the new ones they're called phosphorescent but what they are actually is um, they're a nice transparent watercolor that have a very um, subtle shimmer to it and they're really pretty and I've uh, done a few paintings with these and I'm really happy with the way they've turned out so I'm using some of this uh, nice kind of crimson red and some lemon yellow and just going in and basing in the colors there just to give it um, an all over wash, kind of like my lightest cast reflections, I would say, or reflected, um, not bright reflections, but you know, the, just the lighter tones. And now I'm going in with a darker version of the red and um, deepening up the colors that I know that will be deeper. So basically what I'm doing with this watercolor layer is I am trying to kind of get a lot of the work done so that when I go in with colored pencils it's going to be a lot easier because with the colored pencils uh, the Prisma colors that I like to use they um they layer up really well on top of watercolor because they have a little bit of opacity to them especially like the white um, so I know I'm going to be able to bring in some brighter highlights I'm going to be going to be able to go darker and layer up lighter with the pencils now I am going into the color race pencil right now just to kind of get the pattern of my um my seeds you could do this with a regular uh, color pencil a uh, regular colored pencil but I want to make sure that if I made a mistake I could actually paint over it or erase it but if I went in with the regular Prisma colors it would be difficult to remove that wax so I'd kind of be stuck with it so that's why I'm doing this with the color race and um, these strawberries are not like your you know pristine beautiful cultivated strawberries they look a lot more natural and organic which i really liked about that um so that's what i that's what i decided to to go for and i just wanted to get a few seeds in there so i could go in and put this darker layer here and leave some of the light areas unpainted with this layer so i would have those different variances of reflections and shine on the strawberry it won't look really shiny till i get into the colored pencil portion but i'm just trying to get as much work done in this uh, watercolor uh, range as i can and as you can see by adding those shadows it makes those the lighter underwash look a little shiny right it gives it that that depth and it's starting to give roundness to those berries so they appear to be more three-dimensional versus um versus two-dimensional and it's all about layering and I see um, a lot of students with work and they're like they're, they're not happy with it and it's just they need a few more layers or they need a little more time and that's really all it needs they're so close to having a breakthrough but they just um, they kind of don't don't haven't had enough experience to know how long it takes to complete a picture 
to the um, to the level that they're looking for. And um, some it just it just helps. That's why I love Critique Club because somebody can post their artwork and be like, I, I wish it looked more like this, but it looks like this. What did I do wrong? And it's a lot of times it's like, oh, you didn't do anything wrong. You just need to keep keep at it, keep working at it. So if you think you'd be, um, you'd benefit from having a little extra guidance with your artwork, then um, I'll have a, the link to Critique Club down below in the video description and you can go check it out and see if it's for you. It's, uh, it's a wonderfully supportive group and, um, and I really enjoy, uh, enjoy all the artwork and all the members. It's a lot of fun. So I'm doing the same thing with the hulls that I did with the strawberries. I'm adding uh, more color. I'm adding some darker, more like hooker's green in the darker areas. And I mixed in some more uh, yellows in the uh, the more highlight areas. And again, this is going to require more layers with color pencil afterwards, but this is getting so much of the work done. Now, there's nothing wrong with doing a um, artwork start to finish in color pencil. It's a lot of fun, but... Um, it can take a lot of time, and sometimes a lot of the stuff that takes a lot of time is not the most fun part of the picture. It's kind of just the blocking in. So I'd rather do that with watercolor myself. You can do it however you want. There's so many different ways to skin a cat. Uh, so now I'm going in right off the bat with my white color pencil because I want to get my brighter values in first. I like to go for contrast. I find it's a lot easier if I have my midtones, my brightest hi highlights, and my darkest shadows um, like um, kind of represented because then it really helps to put in all the other values around that. It's kind of like you have, um, you have a guidepost. You have your floor, you have your ceiling, and you have your walls. So you have to have your floor and your ceiling and your walls down before you can start decorating, right? You don't decorate a house before you've got the seal, the roof on, do you? So it, I feel like artwork is, is very much the same way. And I know I differ from a lot of, um, a lot of watercolor painters on that respect because they will tend to, to build up light to dark. But I really think it helps to have, even if I was doing this straight in, in watercolor, I would want to get those dark values right off the bat, just so I know how far to push all the other colors in between my white of the paper and my, my darkest value. So I, I, that's the way I like to work. You can work however you like. Um, it's not the traditional sense, but I think it's um, it helps with speed and accuracy as you're going along. Now, the neat thing about this is when you're when you're working on this, if you're doing a, uh, a picture like this, you're going to be staring at th that thing and you're going to be like, what a mess. It doesn't look anything like a strawberry. It doesn't look realistic. And then you'll look away for a while and you'll look back at your picture and you're like, oh my gosh, that's three-dimensional. It's so funny how it happens. It's like if you're going to walk away because you're going to be frustrated frustrated, you're going to go, I don't know, take a walk around the block, have a cup of tea or something, and you're going to come back and you'll be like, oh, hey, that doesn't look too bad. I love it when artwork does that. Sometimes I think something's fantastic and I'm so proud of it and I share it on Instagram or whatever. And then I, then I go and look back and I'm like, oh, you know, that's not really that great after I've had a break. But the good thing is with the, with the artwork you don't think is so great, usually it looks better when you come back and you look at it the next day. I find that with like a loose florals a lot too. Now I'm using a nice uh, kind of deep purpley red color here to put in my darkest shadows. And look how round and lifelike it makes that strawberry look. Now I typically use an electric sharpener for my color pencils, but because I was live narrating this for Critique Club, I didn't want to have that loud noise. So I'm just using a little dish there to... Um, uh, sharpen my pencils. These are this is actually a new set of Prismacolors. Um, I moved my older pencils upstairs to my play art desk, and broke out this brand new set. And uh, so far, so good. I had one pencil break and it, with a handheld sharpener, but it didn't with the with the um, electric. So. Uh, so that's good because some people warned me that I might not like the new ones, but I had purchased a smaller pack of Prismacolors before I purchased the big one because I had heard there was some problems and I wanted to see if they'd gotten everything settled. And I think they've got all the kinks worked out of those. Uh, but probably about 10 years ago, they had a lot of problems. Um, they moved the factory for Prismacolor to Mexico and uh, there was a lot of quality control issues, leads not being centered, uh, leads breaking, lots of problems. But um, they seem to have gotten like gotten through that i mean and personal colors have always been notorious because their leads are so soft that they tend to break so that's always been an issue it was just pronounced for a few years and um but it seems to be rectified and you know i know it's not a popular opinion amongst you know real colored pencil artists which i'm not like I'm not, a, I don't consider myself a real colored pencil artist. I'm a mi watercolor mixed media artist. I like to use colored pencils, but not you know, like for the entirety of a piece usually. But Prismacolors are my favorite. And I have, I have a full set of the Polychromos. I have used um, many other brands of pencils, but I love my Prismacolors. Uh, maybe it's because that's what my art teacher had me use when I was five. It was my first colored pencils. Um, and I've just used them all my life. So I tend to like them 
more because of that and that could be the case but they give me the results i want that slightly opaque look that they have lets me layer up on watercolor it lets me um really flesh out an illustration much more than i find other pencils do and i just they're my favorite i i can't really I can't really explain why other than that. I just love the way they feel when they go against the paper. I love the way they glide. I love how soft they are. Um, I also like the Color Soft pencils by Derwent, but there's just something about a Prismacolor that I really find tough to match anywhere else. And I know that's a, an unpopular opinion these days, but, um, but don't be ashamed if you like Prismacolor pencils because I do too. So we're in the same club. I'm really, in, I'm actually enjoying watching this back in time lapse um, quite a bit because it you know this took about an hour and 45 minutes just to give you a base of comparison if you're doing this drawing at home and i'll link the reference photo down below it was from unsplash um so don't be discouraged if it's taking you time because this is a small picture this is probably like four by six or five by seven it's small so you know that took almost two that took almost two hours so keep yourself you know, keep that in mind. Don't be hard on yourself if it's taking you longer than you think it should. Break it up. I mean, art is supposed to be fun. It's not a race. Enjoy yourself um, and give it time. Or maybe just do one strawberry if you're, you know, if you're rushed for time. If you, if bringing a drawing to completion to the level that you like is, is, um, is taking too long, just do a smaller one and uh, then you can get the results a little bit quicker. But this was this is just a really fun process and this is a part of the uh the painting i really love when i'm going in and kind of fiddling and fine tuning you know after i've got the um the washes of color down this is what i found really um really satisfying because you're really starting to see progress fairly quickly once you get to this level um pay attention to when you're doing something like this it doesn't have a lot of um you know focal points and interesting features when it's just kind of very repetitive you want to look for any sort of interesting nuance that you can in the picture so that would be like if you see on a strawberry how sometimes it's got a yellow undertone or a white undertone you, you might be able to see some green um in the skin next to the red any of those subtle tones you want to pick those up you want to get the interesting curves of the leaves um in any interesting shadows any dynamic shadows you want to find those things because that's what's going to take an ordinary object and make it look really interesting and i think our job as artists is to show other people how we see the world and most people don't really take the time to really you know look at a strawberry they'll look at it for like two seconds as they're rinsing it off and before they pop it in their mouths right um so if you can show somebody like the beauty of something simple and help people appreciate the beauty in their everyday life then that is um that is the job of an artist i mean the job of an artist is always to show their experience or show something that they see in the world that other people may miss uh, whether it is um you know political art whether it is religious art whether it is you know decorative art you're showing somebody else the beauty of your world and uh, don't don't discount that that's uh that's that's important that's important i think so and i can help and if i can help you learn how to express yourself in um in art supplies and paint and pencils and paper then i am so lucky to be able to do that um, i'm adding some orange here onto the areas of the strawberries where i see that kind of orangey glow like remember i said look for the undertones a lot of the strawberry has a more of a crimsony cool undertone but there are some yellows and there's some oranges colors orange colors and i want to get those in there now i'm taking a yellow extra fine posca pen and i'm drawing the seeds back in because i noticed they just kind of like just weren't standing out and i really wanted them to like kind of pop in there because they were so prominent in the um, reference photo so i'm just going in and, and hitting those seeds with a pen and you can kind of like if you see that you really should have an extra seed here or there you can go and add them in at this time with these strawberries i mean there isn't a perfect pattern in there some seeds are squished together and some are more uh pulled apart so um trust your eyes trust your photo you know keep looking back and forth as you go now this is just a kind of really pale pale greenish blue color and i'm adding it to because it's almost like a light reflection like the color of the natural light so i'm adding that into my highlights and into the um the hulls because the hulls it's like the the leaves have this very subtle almost fur to them um texture like little hairs on the leaves so i wanted to get that and getting it with a um really pale pale blue green pencil is a great way to do that because it, it mimics the light falling on those um those 
those leaves. So you want to get those in there. And this is just kind of a dark purpley magenta color. And I'm going in and just tracing around my seeds to give them that kind of seat them in there, make them look like they're really indented into the strawberry flesh. So you want that, that, um, to make the strawberries look shiny, you need to have that kind of like pin cushion effect of the, uh, of the seeds kind of being pinned into the strawberry. I hope that makes sense. And I'm using some white and brightening up some spots in the leaves and making them, um, them kind of bright and I'm testing some colors there on the side. I kind of think that my swatches can be as interesting as the um, as the painting sometimes, especially in a sketchbook. I love seeing like notes and swatches and things when I'm looking at other people's sketchbook. So now I'm using a white Posca pen and I am adding um, the brighter highlights that I can't do with the colored pencils because the paper's getting a little too waxy and I can add veins. And if I get too much paint, what I do is I just press it with my finger and lift up some like I did on those veins that were too bright. And if I want to make something more of a sheer, highlight then I will just uh, smudge it with my finger really quickly before the paint dries. So your fingers are really pop really helpful tool when you're using this Posca pen because you don't want every highlight super bright or it'll like compete with the highlight on the strawberry which is really kind of the um it's kind of the main event. Uh, so you need to have those different layers and levels of highlights in order to make it uh, look realistic and have some dominance on the strawberries and have a bit of a focal point on the strawberries. Now in the reference photo you're going to notice that there are uh, the two front strawberries are a little out of focus. It's a very shallow depth of field. Everything behind kind of that strawberry there that I'm working on is out of focus. Everything behind and in front. But I needed to make things a little bit sharper uh, for this picture because it just it it uh, it just didn't work if it was going to be all fuzzy. I didn't think anyway. So just keep that in mind as you're looking at the reference photo if you are trying to follow along. You can also put little dabs of the white paint on the seeds for a little seed highlight on some of the prominent ones or that you can see clearly, but I wouldn't overdo it um, because when you're looking at something, you don't focus on every single detail at once. You focus on one thing and everything else kind of um, fades away or blurs or just falls into the background. So think about that when you're drawing, what's the one thing you want the viewer to focus on? Do that in sharp detail and let the other portions of the picture kind of be less detailed, less dominant, less prominent, and let it kind of fade away. Uh, this is a wonderful exercise in getting the texture of shiny objects and I hope you give something like this a try. I find it very fun and um, this time of year it's very easy to find strawberries so you can actually draw from life which is another great thing. I want to thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up before you go and uh, check out Critique Club if you would like a little more help with your artwork. I apologize for the echo. Um, it's going to take a bit to get the um, addition so it's also echoey where I record my voiceovers but um, thanks for bearing with me. I will see you next time and until then, happy crafting!